Well, hello and welcome to Old Trapper for this very special Bet Fred Love Rugby League weekly. I'm very excited to be here. I've, ju I've just done um, 12 chats with players. Very excited from all, all areas of uh, Yorkshire, Lancashire, uh, South France, the capital. You've so taught yourself horse, to be honest, haven't you, mate? Well, uh, <laughs> I have, we've got the, the Catalan um, Dragons logo behind us. We, we decided to go with Catalan because it's, it's um, the most neutral. It's the most neutral. We're, we're surrounded by all FC, Huddersfield Giants, OKR, Leeds, London, and Castleford. So we go, we go with the Dragons. I think it's because Drew doesn't want to do another expansionist blog, so he's got to put this on instead. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the Catalan Dragons logo behind us. So it's been, it's, too. it's been um, a good event, hasn't it? I think uh, it's good to see uh, Ellie Hanley was here before. Oh, very good to see him. Uh, very interesting. interesting. We're yeah. in better shape than when he retired. It's a oh. magnificent shape, really. It? It's amazing. Yeah, totally amazing. Yeah, I think um, obviously that was to announce the demand of steel and the new the way that Steve Prescott Man Steel is going to work next season. So, Ellie um, Hanley's the chairman of uh, the Man of Steel voting panel. Let's explain it. Yeah, so there's, there's, I think you said there's 21, yeah, 21 ex players, players and coaches, and um, it's going to work on a 3 2 1 voting system throughout the season for each game. So, effectively, the best man of the match will get three points, next will get two, third will get one, and then over the season that'll be totted up. And with Matt Steele, I actually asked Danny Horton about it. I think, I think he's a pretty good candidate for it. He's someone who's consistent yeah, week in, right. week out. He'll right. He'll probably ch even if he doesn't churn up many threes, I bet he churns up plenty of two. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, feel free to leave us a comment. Drew's going to get his phone out in a minute and uh, make sure we respond to your any, any, qu any questions at all as well? Um, any questions? Any, you, 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 any questions? Let's uh, test our rugby ask, ask, ask us what we have for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, part of the reason Drew did so many interviews is because he skips lunch because he's on a strict diet. So, ah, right. Okay. He's got his attempt. He's got his attempt. He's got his attempt. He's got his attempt. He's got I'm not sure if we've had any, any comments. Well, well, I, I just thought, keep, that, we could, just thought that we could crack on with a bit of a format. So on, I thought, well, we also went to the Championship match on Tuesday over in York. What yeah. was that for you? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. It was nice to go to York. York's a beautiful place. Um, I've been going there this season for some games. Um, it, was, it, it, went, it was over pretty quick. I didn't get a chance to speak to as many people as I, as I would have liked, but um, spoke to a few people and, and you know, obviously from the first perspective, we'll to speak to, to Windows coach Kieran Burton and, and get their thoughts on the season. I think, I think everyone in rugby league is quite excited for the start of the season. And, you know, Super League particularly is it unpredictable, there's a lot of contenders. Um, championship as well, you've got 14 teams and again, you know, you've got the Toronto thing, you've got the Toulouse thing, you've got Bradford, you've got Witness, you've got York, you know, there's loads exactly. of stuff. Yeah, and you know, even you know, put, put the mics closer, closer to the mirrors, we're, we sound very tinny around. All right. Uh, we, we've got a comment <laughs> in all, try and turn the microphones on. Uh, but they're all on. We're just in a very, 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 very big room. It's a, a little bit different, yeah. So we, we sound like we're actually uh, doing this from a toilet, and we're not. <laughs> yeah, and then and then obviously League One as well, where I suppose there's not. It's, it's anyone's to grab, isn't it? In League One, really, and you know Newcastle will fancy it, and, uh, but then you know the traditional. Whitehead and Workington, Doncaster, Bunsler, they're all fancy as well. I spoke to Newcastle coach, Jason Finn at the launch, and he certainly uh, reiterated his, his desire and his ambitions to, to get into the championship. So it, it seems like Thunder are, are really striving towards uh, getting into, into the second tier. And, and with the team that he's had this year, uh, with Mr. Telpapa as captain as well, um, it's, it's possible. It, 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 it's looking like they're one of my tips. But, I was saying today before, I don't trust my tips. I tip Leicester City to, to get relegated from the Premier League here. They won it, so. Uh, <laughs> I think, especially when you can see bringing bring someone like Liam Finney, though, who's been there, he's done that, he's uh, well, Liam, you know, top point scorer yeah. at Championship level. Well, Liam Finn and Re Remy Marginet in the, in the halves, it, it's, it's very good, especially at the League One level, and I think they'll. I think the I think the, the thing is the interesting thing this year is obviously it's the first year where we've had a proper up and down system between all leagues. So you know you've got up and down from Super League, up and down from Championship. So everyone's got something tangible to play for and, and work towards. The interesting thing for me is how Keith will come on. 
there's no one's really speaking about it. Uh, and, and they're in a little bit of a situation where I believe there could be some positive news coming out in the next couple of days. I don't know whether the rugby league are going to put this out at the moment. They're keeping things strictly under wraps, um, not really having the guys that are speaking to some about what's happening. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a strange one, obviously. I mean, it needs sorting ASAP, I suppose. The, the saving grace for them is that they at least got a few more weeks until the season starts. So. Um, and it sounds like Craig Lingard's have, have a team together anyway, training, so it's just a formality maybe. Yeah, probably so, 20 days yeah, so so consider that. It, it, it's, it's, it's obviously just the formalities of getting the team, you know, getting the sign up for the ownership and you know, and seeing seeing how it all comes together and you know, like I say, we heard Mermans that oh, they were open to have it sorted this week, so fingers crossed for Keithley and uh, that'd be good to, to sort of bury that sort of drought. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll, they'll and hopefully they'll compete in the league one season with a pretty full team and a pretty full squad. It's good to see that Lingard can be with the club. I think if it, if it wasn't Lingard, it would be the other's coach. It's I think it'd be good for League One if you if you can get a competitive league throughout. And obviously West Wales are a lot stronger. Uh, will be a lot stronger this year. They're the great one, um, normally, yeah. Yeah, and you know Kim Williams. Uh, you know he's got a. An interesting job, but even Coventry as well. It'd be nice if the teams, if there's not like, it's not like two or three left at the bottom, if you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, an exciting season all around. We've got a couple of questions there. Okay. Um, what do we think of Swinton's clue season as a sign? So the, 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 the pick of the bunch is obviously uh, Oscar Thomas, the stuff. Well, I wouldn't concentrate on that because what Swinton have done, they've brought a lot of young players from the amateur game. Started last season, late last season, with their recruitment to Ryan Gray from the East. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how some of them young guys go. So, some of them are, are getting a second goal at the same professional rugby league, that's like Frank Hollerton, for example. Uh, others, brand new at it. Now let's chuck in Thomas, and his international experience. And obviously, they've signed for so Which I think is a brilliant side, and he's, he's such a good guy to talk to as well. So I mean, like the big thing here at the Super League launch has been about new beginnings, it's been about putting players front, centre, and future about everything going forward. And there's a few of these guys in the championship, and Rob Furman is certainly one of those. I, I mean, I think, you know, like I say, I mean, Davey probably know much more about Swinton's players than I do. I think probably looking at their team. On paper, I would probably say that they're going to be probably favourites for relegation. But then at the same time, I think the thing is when you get young players, if you're never quite sure, you know, it might go one. You know, if they play to their potential, you know, their potential could be huge, and you know that might be might prove the difference. I think the thing with Swindon is that they're a lot more stable off the field, aren't yes. they? And yeah. Certainly the environment and the culture and, and everything that the club are creating around Swindon. I think that'll be beneficial. I really like going to games at, at Haywood Road. I think it's a nice. Uh, it's a traditional venue. Yeah, yeah, it's a decent little setup. Yeah, it's a decent setup. Yeah, and um, I think if they can get a few wins on the board early doors and get the confidence up, then you know they might do okay. Um, I think last, they obviously got a bit of a both of them and Rochdale got a little bit of a reprieve last year didn't they, because of the, the change in format. Um, I think both of those teams really. Um, they struggled against the teams around them, and I think that's where you know them, them games, you know, against your Dewsbury's and Sheffield, they're the games that you're gonna have to really um, pick out and win this year. And, and of course, different format. We talk about the different format too, please. The different format championships actually gonna affect you massively as well because you, you're not playing. Whereas in the Championship Shield, you're just playing the teams directly above you. You're now playing everyone twice across a bigger league, which might actually suit Swinton and Rochdale a little bit better because. It's like if you lose to your closest rivals three times, like you were in the Championship Shield days, it's an even bigger task than if you've lost to them twice, if that makes sense. We've still got an extra game in the calendar, though, with what's happening at Blackpool. Yeah, yeah. The, the bash, so some teams will play each other three times. And yeah, I think in, Swindon uh, play Rochdale, don't they? Do? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking so. Lee with Nest, they're going to be sick of the sight of each other this season, although nothing against right. Kieran Burke at all. It's interesting actually speaking to John Duffy on Tuesday, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to, I mean I think he was probably deliberately playing things down, but he's, he wasn't even talking about top five, he was just thinking, oh we just want to... I, th I think we could, could make it into that top five. I think they could. They've got 21 signed players though. But then yeah, the but same, they've, all, they've, all, they've, they've, also, they've also got sort of a few rising stars, I mean right, real yeah. promising stars, I think 
right at the start of the game. Yeah, what's it possibly it? getting James Bentley, who obviously was a standout at Bradford Bowls a couple of seasons ago. Um, probably the likes of Jack Ashworth might be going. Uh, you might see definitely um, this season. The likes of Jack Wells being made his debut and was fantastic for England Academy in the autumn. So I don't, although Liam only got 21 players registered, I, I think obviously with the Saints boys coming in on, on dual reg, I think it'll go, it'll go very well. As a Leaf fan, I'd be happy with anything but wait. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, just yeah. as long as it's still a championship. There are there about, yeah. It's, it's, it's all about, it's a transition year, isn't it, for the club this year, and it's, it's just about maintaining a stable way of I, 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 I think Leo gets up five. I think Leo gets up five. But, uh, you know, it was interesting yeah. to speak to, uh, I spoke to Ryan, Ryan Carr, uh, the Feverston coach, um, for quite a bit as well. And, and, he's uh, only a young guy. Yeah, he's only a young guy, yeah, and he seems pretty. Uh, he, he thinks there's going to be a little bending in time, so Benson might get off to a slow start. But, I think generally he's quite happy with the squad that he's, he's got together. Um, Can you afford to get off to a slow start though? I mean, I was looking at the first three games with this player, for example. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not too sure about the feathers, to be fair. They seem, I think they will be struggling. Uh, we don't know too much about Ryan Carter and coach coming in. Um, they made, they made a few decent signs, obviously, they've happened in Gideon was coming in. I think uh, it'll be a more behind the game set at the moment. Yeah, that, that's what I was just going to touch on. It, it, it's a, a weird one with that, because it, it's a fantastic art back to come in and flourish. Um, fantastic, but there's a, a good chance of it going the, the opposite way as well. It's, it's, it's an hour, and when your arms are performing, then, then the, the rest of the team are performing. Now, it's you mentioned, be interesting to see the ball. You mentioned Papua New Guinea, I mean, they've got a league of all nations of barrels, right? I've seen that picture of. Uh, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it Mitsing? Is it Mitsing with the guy that got a barrel? Minogue. Minogue, sorry. I've seen him in the snow. I've seen him in the snow at Craven Park. Sorry, it's At Craven Park on Tuesday in the snow at a night it was, which was interesting. I mean, you know, I think with the championship, you've very much got, I think, you've got almost like a top half and a bottom half and I don't think there's much to choose between the top half and there's not much to choose between the bottom half so uh, and teams like Bar- Barrow we mentioned about the start Barrow had a brilliant start last season and that really like if they hadn't had that start I'm sure they would have been battling down there but they've got that because they had such a good start they were, they were basically, such they, were basically yeah, they were basically just settled in the table weren't they we never, were never troubled they were never even close to the bottom of the relegation places or anything because they started that well they had the points on the board and I think it took it took it took a long part of the season for Sheffield and Jesus to even really get close to um, talking of Sheffield I mean they've totally revamped their squad Mark Aston's got some good numbers there hasn't he yeah, it's he has he has and that's what Sheffield have actually struggled with in, in recent years They've always had a, a decent one to 17, but the, 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 the squad depth has, has been very, very thin over the last couple of years, but that doesn't seem to be the case. They've recruited obviously a few trials as well, and they've offered them deals. But uh, the, the one that stands out for me is uh, out of the fact that really a fantastic signing. And, and when, I, when I've uh, seen him for quite a few times, he's always impressed me. He's got a, a decent little short in the game as well. I think he'll gather around the park pretty well. Uh, obviously we've got the, the likes of Blackmore as well. They'll go very, very well for the Eagles. I think I think they'll have a better team than the last year. It's an interesting shift, isn't it, for Sheffield? Because obviously last year and I think teams before they're very reliant on the St. Helens partnership weren't they? I've heard a lot of St. Helens youngsters, so very interesting to see the thinking and, and whether that affects, you know, whether Mark Aston has experienced that and thought, oh, you know, maybe it doesn't work bringing in these players that aren't in the unit from, from day one. Uh, don't forget Sheffield has been won the championship twice in the last ten years. Um, you know, so Mark Aston knows, knows what to do in, in the division and um, you know they've got the new ground now and of course it's still a long way from where they want it to be but um, you know things are generally coming together for them now so we've got a we've got a couple of comments on Super League as well there so we will come on to Super League yeah I mean we've got we've got three or four teams to look at we looked at four last time yeah 
But Derek said a, a, a game with you, you, who obviously asked about Swinton before, Derek said a game with your thoughts on Lee, uh, John Duffy, and then some of the brilliant signings, especially Martin Ridyard. Uh, Andrew Clifford said, Ali Facts with the squad they are, but should I finish in the top five? Oh, to be honest, yeah. In the we championship? Have, oh, we no, haven't, I we haven't think... mentioned Ali Facts no, at all, have we? No, they no. always fly under they the do. radar, they don't do. they? We never talk about them. Well, they're, they're, all, they're always there. there, there about, so yeah, they, they are in... What I, what I like about Alifax, but obviously we've mentioned it a few times on the show, I love what they do with the reserves and the... Oh, you're getting on the reserve guy again. <laughs> oh. they, give, they, give, they, they give players who are fellows who are uh, under 19 uh, ranks a uh, chance, and it's great to see him flourishing and coming through the factory. I think... I think Halifax, I'm, I'm just trying to top up and me five, but Halifax certainly, uh, I think, uh, we're uh, in the, in yeah, certainly in the, in the, in the oh. top five, I reckon. Uh, I, must have, I must have changed my prediction in uh, Leeds State tonight. Yeah, we'll be different again next week. Yeah, yeah. 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 There'll be someone else who'll sign someone. I think, I think, you've, got, I think you've got them seven, haven't you? I think those yeah. are the seven that... Uh, it's, it's like when um, you, you have like an MP4 uh, file on your computer, it's... David's brackets final version, and then you've got another final final version, and then you've got another version two final, and then another final final latest edition. <laughs> so, so, so they're, they're kind of like my writing. At, have you been looking at my editing from when we were doing all this on? You know, it's like I used to edit, they'd be like, yeah, I'll be with that. Oh no, no, I've done a bit there. I've done a bit there. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we, we've got quite a few comments. I think yeah. that Halifax are definitely to the uh, top five. Team. Fire them at us. What, what are these comments? Well, Come on, keep well, them coming. Well, let's go Super League now. Most of them are Super League. Let's go Super League, Dave. We want Super League. Right, let's go Super League. So obviously we're here at the uh, launch. Chuck a couple of these comments at us. Well, uh, Jason Bezik, I think he's a Warrington fan. He said, yeah. why are you to win everything? Uh, uh, I think we'll do well, but I don't think they'll win everything. We discussed Warrington and some went in the last we time round. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, even... Even Betfred have, have put. Um, yeah, Warrington are saying it's joint favourite. Yeah, yeah, and they've put. Thanks for the sponsorship, Betfred. Yeah, yeah. Nice, one, nice mention for Blake Austin for favourite for the steel. I, well. He wasn't putting pressure on him, was he? He no. spoke in front of the crowd here. He, he was a Pat Media event. Um, and he, he, he said the same thing to him. He thanked, yeah, he, he thanked Betfred for the embarrassing him, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think he, he's right to be fair, right? Superstar in the star in the NRL. It's only right that he's a uh, fair of my steel, but he's going to be the other time. But I think, I think if they haven't, haven't recruited big names like Jason Clark and Blake Austin, that Jim Mamma will be getting more of a mention because it's easy. We all know where you can do it. Patrick, you know, friendly against Wigness at the weekend. And he's got an action against Warrington for us, we'll see. He likes playing there. Well, one of the tries worth a try, one of the tries is clearly not on in the corner. But, was it in the record book? But it is in the it's record book. It's a try. 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 It's a when, when we did our our rugby league shorts the other week, I tipped Leeds in there, so I'm with you now. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm yeah, not. but there's tipping Leeds and there's tipping them to win the treble. Yeah. Well, I didn't tip them to win the treble. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. we did, to be honest, we were only talking yeah, to yeah, yeah, weren't we? Right. And when R- we talk- but he also wants to get a relegated, which I can't yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> and were we talking league winners, or were we talking the end of season jamboree grand final? No, the champion, isn't oh. it? And the season jamboree. Okay, sure. That's what you want to call it. He referred to the League of the Shield in Free Ball as the 18th Yeah, yeah. yeah. The proper 18th Castle, yeah. It's a Shield rather than a Free Ball, isn't it? And he also, he also said uh, on the train coming back that um, tips fair to win the championship. He definitely don't know what he's talking about. He was very, sorry for uh, from He was very Yorkshire biased. He, yeah, he was. I fancy Wakefield, he was sitting up on Wakefield. Well, we have been accused of being biased the other way to close him out. Sure, haven't we? Yeah. Well, someone's got to be. Well, we're, we're not. We're not worth the best. Come on, then, Jim. Keep going. You know what I mean? Uh, Wakefield about 10% up. I'm not too sure what I mean by the comments there. What's that? Wakefield 10% up. Yeah, Wakefield 10% up. Oh, that's oh, 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 Kev said. Oh, Super League season ticket sales gone at Super League clubs are a lot of keeping quiet, which must mean sales clubs have been that good. And then obviously, Ben's reply saying we're here about 10%. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, they've, they've, the they've done some fine recruitments, haven't they, Wakefield? And again, we talked about Wakefield and someone went last time. Yeah, well, I, I spoke to Chris Jester and uh, 
I always spend a lot of time speaking to Wakefield at these and other teams. Uh, spoke to my, Michael Carr quite a bit at the Super League Green team. And if you look at what Wakefield have done over the past few years, I think this win has probably been their best year of recruitment in terms of if you look what they've added, you've got Cop Jack. George King, you can both play long minutes, which might be which might be important with the reduced interchange. You've got Danny Crawford, you know, he's a he's a, ma- he's a proven match winner, he's a prolific and, and Chris just actually said that he said one of the reasons with Brough is that they, they lost a few games by a few points last year. Yeah. That potentially Danny Brough could get them all over the edge. It's gonna be interesting to see that combination between Miller and uh, Brough and yeah, it's obviously I'm sure will be involved, but we expect uh, Ryan Hampshire to be well, I expect Ryan Hampshire to, to be the number one uh, at fullback. Uh, a couple more comments. Uh, well, like everyone, I think we've got quite a few Warrington fans watching and what come on the wire. Um, so yeah, a few, a few people. Yeah, we could have, we could have. Yeah, we could have an audience and have an audience. That's a good idea. A few people are giving us a bit of a bit of stick about the zone. We can't, we can't have a bit. We're we about five floors up in Old Trafford. And it's a very, very big green. It's very equitable. Yeah, he's just one of those things. Uh, I'll say we'll, we'll see what we can do in post production. But, uh, but so, so who, who, who we got? Who we got? What four teams are we looking at? Uh, well, funnily enough, let's go with your Diamond Geezer from Leeds. Diamond Geezer. Oh, Leeds. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So I mean, you, you look at you look at them. I mean, but, you've got recruited very, very well. Two of the lucky ones to see him. Oh, I've seen him quite a few times. I enjoy watching the NRL. I watch. Roughly game of a lot of week. Um, seen him a few times last season. Obviously, seen him for, t- for Tonga as well in the, the World Cup. Fantastic player. They'll bring that that bit of extra factor uh, to Leeds. He, he's got a good step on him. Uh, he's got a, a very good one out here. And, uh, a very good addition. Richie Marr will be the ball, the, the kind of the, the organiser and, and ball here. Can he organise? Uh, because I would always put I would always put Miles as more of a runner than an organiser. Well, that's what I think. I think Miles will be the organised rather than Lower Heat uh, at least this season. I think Lower Heat has got to be the runner um, because that's what he's best at. Um, I think Miles will take that role and be the organiser. Don't tell me you're going to sign two halfbacks that are like the same. Seen it quite a, plenty of times before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, time will tell, I suppose. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Jack Walker. Apparently, he's booked up over the close season. Um, pushed himself in front of Ashton Golding last year. Uh, do you expect that to carry on? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we all know what a special talent Jack Walker is. He's a sensational player. I think he, uh, obviously he seems to get knocked quite a bit in games, but that's probably just because of his, his size, really. Uh, more than anything, he seems to, to get, get a, a lot of knocks. But I think he, he's going to be uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a superstar, isn't he? Jack Walker, I think he's a superstar. He'll be, you know, you'd imagine at this event next year, he'll probably be one of the faces, I would imagine. Uh, James Trent, what do you reckon about him coming in? Yeah, I mean, obviously Leeds. Sportsman before as well, I agree. Yeah, but it's, it's an interesting one with Leeds because obviously they've had these two poor seasons by their standards, either side of the grand final win. Um, the team probably did need rebuilding a little bit, and obviously got a new coach. And you know they've made you know Trent Merrin and, and Tom Apple, you know, as well as all here, you know, very high-profile quality signings. And, um, you know Dave Ferner will want to get his own, um, put his own stamp on the team. And you'd imagine Merrin's a bit like a Dave Ferner yeah. type player, isn't it? Um, Interesting that uh, Dave Ferner's kind of downplaying Leeds' impacts this season, hasn't he? He's concentrating on getting them gelling as a team. Yeah, well, I think they, they, I mean, the way last season went, they sort of fell apart a little bit, and they, uh, you know, they had, they went really poor. I think they only, only win two two games against Super League teams, and that, that was both Widner against Witness, I think, in a run of like 17, 18 games. So um, they they lost away a bit last season, it has to be said, but they've addressed that with the recruitment. And like I say, I mean, I think with a new coach and with a new team, you've got to give time for for it to gel a little bit, and um, you know, I think probably leads. Probably, I'd imagine Fern's probably thinking, let's just make the top five. Yeah. Do you you know, know, he's not thinking but, about but, finishing top. But you know. I asked, I asked Fern before, and uh, I asked, who's in pressure? Who didn't really know about the team? He said, all the young kids that are leading. He, he said, uh, all the young, young, the young guys did very, very well. The likes of Joe Walker, Ash Hamlin was, uh, was mentioned as well. Uh, who impressed him obviously. To be fair with Ash Hamlin, it's about time he started pushing forward because he's been in and around that yeah. Leeds team for about well, four well, years. He's, now. He's, he's played centre as well, hasn't he, quite a few times, uh, more recently rather than 
something on the wing, so that, that could possibly be I think, a position, but I think he will start on the wing. I think that's the thing with Hanley and Sutcliffe, and maybe to a lesser extent Stevie Ward, because Stevie Ward's a you know, really good player. I think Hanley, Sutcliffe, maybe... Not Walker necessarily because he's already at that level, but them players have got to step up to that next level. You know, something we talk about is succeeding in field or whatever. And, you know, he's, I'm not denying he's a good player, but as he Injuries take, haven't done it. Yeah, as he as he taken up that next, a bit like Brad Singleton. I know Singleton had to go elsewhere and then come back. He's, I'd say, that he's pushed himself to that next level now, um, and it's up to the other players to, to sort of do the same. The good thing about this lead squad is the fact that it's, it's really heavy on numbers, isn't it? I mean, they've got squad numbers going right up to 35. They've had, they added. Maybe he's not Stafford just before Christmas, Fantastic, isn't it? You know, we've got great right? I, I hope he gets a, his, his chance this year. I hope he makes his Super League debut because he's a fantastic player. I've seen him a few times. Obviously, he's shown for England Academy against us as a schoolboy. He really mixed it up with the with the oldies. Um, but I've seen him in the under 19s Academy Grand Final for the for Leeds Rhinos in the defeat to Wigan. He was by far Leeds' best player out there. I think I think the thing with Leeds is the much maligned reserve slash dual reg system is Leeds are the, the, the team that made it work best, haven't they? And you look at you know you look at throughout that Leeds squad, they've got players who've been able to play for Featherston on a regular basis, being able to play for Hunter on a regular basis. You know, even Harry Newman could, who's could, could Cameron King play for Leeds? No, I'm not sure about that. Oh, we're not going sure. down, we're not going down that road. Harry Newman's a good example of someone, what is he, 16, 17, or he was last season, and he was yeah, playing, yeah, he's yeah. playing a few games for Featherston. So that means now, if Leeds chuck him in, have to chuck him in for whatever reason this season, he, you know, he's got that experience. He's got something like 14 tries in 14 games. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see um, a big, big, big year for Brad Wire at Leeds this, this season, because uh, obviously he's in and out inside of uh, the Brad McDermott. Um, when I when he originally joined Leeds from Warrington, I thought, wow, that's a, that's a very very impressive signing. Dwyer and Parcel is interchanging up, so that's fantastic. He's not quite done it in the Leeds shirt yet, but he's he's a really really good player. Um, I rate him quite a bit, and it's a, a big deal. Yeah. If it doesn't work out this year, what happens for him with the Rhinos? Uh, we're going from a team with lots and lots of numbers to a team that well, it's it's a little bit short on numbers, Salford. Mm. But some quality teams. Do you think is there the only the total of 25 players? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, and uh, are they dual reds with anyone? Uh, uh, I've not read I, 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 I don't think they will be because they won't well, have many players to, to put out. But, uh, but you look at it and there's 17. Well, they well, yeah, sound well. The, the squad on paper is very impressive. I spoke to Ian Watson last week at the, the social media day. Um, he admitted that it's, it's short, but he said that we, we, we won't get a short budget, yet. We, we've tried to get strength in depth rather than. Uh, they've, they've gone for quality rather than quantity. Because if, if you look even at the latter uh, numbers in the squad, it's still impressive. Yeah, they've got, they've got, they've got, even though they've got 25, they've got 25 decent levels. It's not Two like. They've, yeah, they've players. not got yeah. 18 and then it, it dips off. Yeah. You know, you look at. You know, obviously they've, they've taken a few punts, so like Adam Lawton's a, a bit of a punt. Um, Daniel Murray we've seen quite a few times in the Championship for Halifax. Good player, know, Yeah, can he, can he step up? Um, I suppose the issue for Salford, but then having said that, it's an issue for everyone, is what happens if you get a few injuries. Uh, you know, how much does that disrupt them? How much flexibility, you know, by the sounds of it, there's no money to sign anybody else. So if you do get an injury, you know, where, you know, what do you do? What do you do well, then? Well, was that, was are they one of the clubs which is developing in Category 3 Academy? Yeah, they are, they are, yeah. Um, and we've seen Conor Davis Aspie. Uh, play for Salford in, in the two pre-season friendlies against Swinton and Wigan. He impressed in the in the game against Swinton. Uh, got quite a bit of game time. Played alongside obviously Martin Jackson, which is fantastic for himself. And it's a good little story about Conor Davis actually. Actually, uh, Wigan won, um, and he actually designed the under 19 kit for for Wigan two years ago. Uh, he went over to the area of visit in Italy, helped the kit get made. Um, and the, the under 19 is played in it. He was in the, the Warriors Academy originally, I think he got let go um, and played it. I think he went to Saints as well and he got let go from there. And he's, a, he's arrived at Salford now. Uh, it seems to have he's, uh, found his feet, if you like, um, and he's, he's enjoying it at Salford. But I did speak to Ian Watson, and Watson said that it's probably looking like he'll, he'll go to a league or a championship team just to get that bit of experience. I know sometimes. 
we shouldn't maybe pay as much attention to squad numbers. But in Salford's case, I think it's an interesting one because Josh uh, Wood has pushed himself to the number nine jersey. That's surely based on his performances at the end of last season. Yeah, that, Ian Watson said that. He said he fully deserved it for his performances last season. And what I like about Wood is he's a versatile because he can play at nine and he can play in the arms as well if needed. Uh, but I like about him just that the ability to play. He's, a, he's not a superstar. He's not a Jackson Mason, but he, he works, he's absolutely not so. Um, it, it'll, it'll leave no so to him. And, and of course there's nine levels as well. He was just progressed and progressed. Yeah. Uh, again, he's always going to be tried, isn't he? Huge fan of, huge fan of nine levels. He can come up with something from absolutely nothing. You didn't ask, you didn't ask uh, Ian Watson about him. Did he just give that comment? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just gave that comment. I said, um, oh, right, I said, I said, you did prompt him and say, no, what's he no. remind you of? <laughs> <laughs> We've had this before, haven't we? No. With, uh, but, uh, but no, I, I didn't ask him anything. It's I, not the next great Eden, is it? No, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I just asked him who's right for you and he came out with it. He came out with that line and I ran with it. It was, it was quite a good line to be fair. Um, but yeah, no, he just gave that comment and I said, what's he remind you of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Being compared to Don Unlucky, it must be a, a big compliment, but he's, he's fantastic now, that will do. Very underrated for me. Um, I don't think that a lot of people uh, pay much, too much attention to him, probably because he's played for sort of and stuff like that, which I think is a bit uncalled for really, but he's a, a good player. And a lot of fun. I like a lot of stuff that Salford are doing both on social media this year, and they seem to really involve people. Speaking to the likes of Lee Mossopier at the event today, he was saying, it's a big family though, so although they're, they're short numbers. Well, I think that's what you've got to be like at the lower teams, haven't you? And I think that's what Wakefield have managed to do in, in the last few years, is they've really built a, a culture and, and made their players want to play there. And, you know, I, I was speaking to Tom Johnston and he was saying, all the players, they want to stay away from the wins from there now because they've all bought into the to the ethos and bought into the club. And, and that's what you want, and that's what fans want as well, most importantly. They don't want players just turning up for the money and, and going. They want people who want to care about the club, who get to the community. You know, Drew's a massive Jackson Ace Stins fan. You know, the things that he's done in the, in the community yeah, over, really over the close season. Really, and that's what, that's, what it's, no, that's what it's all about. You know, everyone, you know, certain clubs go on about community work. That's the true community work, stuff like that. He was a man in demand today, by the way, wasn't he, Jackson Ace? Every was time that, I looked up, there was about three or four people. Yeah, I, did, I didn't speak to him today because I, I think I... He tuned his ear off at the Yeah, weekend. I'm very, I tuned his ear off. I think I got about a 12 minute chat with him a few weeks ago, yeah, so... Um, well, that wasn't behind Drew in the queue then. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be wound up after yeah, that. It, to be fair, he speaks, it, he speaks very passionately yeah. about uh, Salford. Salt he, he loves it at the club, but, but what, I, what I just really admire about him is his community working. He goes to the Holly Lane uh, off his own back. The club don't ask him to go and goes on his, on his own alongside the other they do some training drills, they teach the youngsters um, just just some skills, some rugby skills. But it's it's that impression that he gives off, I think, I feel, because I remember when I, I used to play as a junior and when, when like, rugby players came to our training and, and ran drills in, it's like, wow. Like, I'm, I'm a, Terry Newton's teaching me on that. Do, do you know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of stuff that sticks long in the memory. Um, on, then. Oh, let's move on yeah. to the next, uh, the next one. Huddersfield, what do you reckon about Huddersfield? They're, they're, again, they come numbers this season. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And, um, obviously, they've lost McGillivray for a couple of months, which is a huge blow. We've, we've got the senior boys yeah. to, to walk for the Phillies boots, or, or it could possibly bring better in. Uh, Scott Brick, for the four, I can shift down on McIntosh back to the wing. I'd, be, I'd, 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 last I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably tip that to happen, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I suppose I had a, I had a good chat with Absolute Sam Walker, to be fair. And, um, you know, he's obviously in the process of rebuilding the team. Yeah. You know, he took over, and of course, you know, in a salary cap situation, it's very difficult to just say, right, we want all you gone, we want new ones in. So he seems fairly content with what he's got. Obviously, he's got Matt Frawley, who's a half back that not many of us know a great deal about, and he's got big boots to fill um, in Danny Brooks. Especially when Brooks has been there as well. Yeah, and you know, I think Wolford's. Um, he was quite pragmatic about that. He's not expecting, you know, he's, he's ex for is his own player, he does his own thing. Well, um, got to be up in interesting, in interesting. Well, this is a really interesting one, I think, because you've got players in certain positions mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh, you know, how, how will that all come together? So there'll be a, an interesting one to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they're bringing in the likes of Akual Uati as well, the superstar of the Australian game, uh, one of the most spectacular players we've seen in the last 10 years of NRL. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, and I, you know, and I think he's a good, he'd be great. It'd be great when McGill be fit and got them two on the wings. I mean, that that'd be brilliant. Oh, I a really good signing. Um, I think the, the most interesting about Huddersfield is the the EFO situation. Um, where How must he feel? It, it's like well, he's gone from being in dream team yeah. to being like it's like they want to get rid of him. Um, now, are they trying to get rid of him because they want the space on the cap to sign someone else? Is it that the coach doesn't like him? Has something else gone on that we don't know about? He was one of the most talked about players in the off season, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, in the, he was in the dream team not too uh, 2017. Yeah, yeah. two years so, ago. So he's a yeah, fantastic forward, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what's going on there. And, and if he's going to do it, he's 26. If, yeah. if he's been given a, a, a number of rights at the back end, it's, it's, it's what, what's, what's happened because you would have thought he would have just got the number eight or whatever he had in the cell. I think there's a lot of honesty yeah. though in this Huddersfield team. You know, you're looking like a Michael Lawrence, 10 years. Uh, uh, ten years of first team playing there and um, you know celebrating his testimonial yeah. Yeah, I think you, it, I think what worries me a little bit is you've got you've got that honesty like you say, but you've also got the injuries. Right, okay. Do you know what I mean? I think I think if you look, if you run down that list, especially like Kudjo's out at the start of the season, McGill was already injured, Turner's had his injury problems, Gaskell's had his injury problems, Clubs had his injury problems. And yeah. It's like if they get a couple of them break down it, well, an interesting one as well is that Aaron Murphy's been named at 11 this year. Now, he's been so used to playing out on the no, way. To, to, be fair, to be fair, towards the end of the back. Uh, he back did play a bit at back, back row. He played at back row. And I, I remember reporting on the Magic Weekend game, Huddersfield versus Wakey, I think it was. And, um, and Murphy made his, well, made his debut at back row, shall we say. Okay. Um, and he stood out. And I, I remember giving him the, the star man because he, he can you say that? Really, just after yeah. so, yeah, so. we, we might have to leave the pool for next week. Do you reckon? Well, they are dismantled around. Well, they are packing up around us, but let's uh, let's still crack on then. If you want to leave pool for next week, then we certainly can. And yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll, we'll do five next teams week, next week. Yeah, uh, Jason also says that I think Danny Walker is going to be a great player for Wanga. What's your thoughts? Um, he's in this year as well. I'd agree. I think you he's think, quite think dynamic. Play, what do you think of play watch this year? Very promising player, but. I think he'll play in certain games. Yeah, he might get. I don't think he'll play every week. But I think he might get ten or twelve hundred. It's, yeah. it's got to be Blake Costin and Kevin Brown in the arms, isn't it? And Clark with obviously Clark, play with, eight. With yeah. Clark nine, obviously they, they put Declan Patton on the bench as well. Uh, oh yeah, because yeah, we're expecting Patton to go on to do better things. Mm. I'm a bit worried to this. So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, Steve Price goes in his options in terms of getting that number fourteen <coughs> on the bench. Uh, I wanted to talk Challenge Cup because we finally got a sponsor, uh, the Coral Challenge Cup, this of course being uh, the Betfred Love Rugby League Weekly, of course. Yeah. Uh, but let's give it a big up. They've come yeah, in. obviously always good to get sponsors, isn't it? Right. No matter who they are. Um, yeah. I wanted to run through the draw as well. You're not going to go for all 26 games? Yes, I am. Oh, here we yes, go. Yes, I am. But I'm going to start with the Sunday games because there's only three of those. Oh, right. So on Sunday, it's North Hearts Crusaders taking on the Royal Air Force. Lock Lane taking on Longhorns of Ireland and uh, Millen against Red Star Belgrade which you'll be able to catch on BBC online. Uh, that's kicking off at half past one. Um, I'm looking forward to watching that to be fair. Yeah. It'd be yeah, it'd just be just to see what Serbians are like, do you know what I mean? Just to see like what and I hope that it is a competitive game. Do you know what I mean? I hope I hope that they really make a fist of it and it's not, you know, a one sided because obviously we have, we haven't really got a clue, have we? We don't no, we know haven't. what sort of level they're at. You know, they, they might wipe the floor with Millen for all we know. Do you know what I mean? In theory. So it'd be really fascinating from that point of view to see how that game goes. Uh, and as you know, I love my uh, amateur rugby league. So it's Kells against Rochdale Mayfield, Oral yeah. St James against Underback Rangers, which is going to be live on the Our League app this uh, coming Saturday. West Bowling at home to Hammersmith Hills Hoists from London. Uh, Dewsbury Moore take on Skirlet. Interesting game that for Dewsbury Moore because Danny Mahon has just taken over as head coach there. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. East Leeds are at home to Batley Boys, the new boys coming into the uh, National Conference League 3. Wigan St Jude's at home to Crossfields. That's a massive game. Man. Wigan Warrington Derby. I think if, if, if the weather's not kind of where I'm going to be, I might go to that one. What would you use? Uh, Bentley take on the army. It's the Royal Navy taking on West Hull. It should be an interesting tie in itself. Driglington at home to the All Golds. Uh, Welshside Toffee and Tigers travel up to Dissington in Cumbria. The Dissington, that's where I said. I'm, 
I've got a bit of Cumbrian love going on after uh, being on tour with Tall Cumbrians. Might, might have to regionalise this tour the way things are going. Shawcross Sharks are at home to Haydock. Ovenden take on Wollstone Rovers. Featherstone Lions travel over to Hunslet Warriors. Bit of a local derby, that one. Should be a fascinating time itself. York Acorn at home to Beverly. That's uh, again, a bit of a local derby between those two. Uh, North Mountain Knights against Edinburgh Eagles. Bradford Dudley Hill at home to Milford Marlins. Clockface Miners at home to Sydney. Again, it's Clockface's first ever Challenge Cup tie, so right. they're making history coming into the uh, competition this year. Hunslet Club Parkside, who've played against three semi professional teams Your in the build of the season. Uh, led by my mate, Big Skip, that's Jamie Fields. Uh, top bloke, top bloke. And uh, they're going to be playing against Thornhill Trojans. Sato Heath Crusaders have an interesting time at Stanley. We wipe the floor with everyone at Conference 2 last season. London Chargers at home to Wathbrook Hornets. All those kicking off at 2 pm. And then your half past two kickoffs. You'll like this one, Drew. Lee Miners Rangers against Ulton Raiders. Walls End Eagles take on the British Police Force. And Lee East at home to Wigan St. Pat's. And what we're playing for there is who hosts the second round draw which will take place on Monday night. Mickey Iam and George Williams making the draw as well though. Yeah, I think that's it, but we better wind up before uh, we get packed up. I think we're the last one. Yeah, we are. You can probably hear us far better now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for bearing with us. Uh, we'll see you again this time next week. Yeah, please do leave your comments and shares and, and everything like that. But yeah, thanks.